The intro to the Pixar movie Up tells the story of a couple from start to end while making you feel a whole range of emotions. And all of that in just 4 minutes and 21 seconds. But do you really need a multi-million dollar studio? Could you create an animation like this on your own? To figure that out, I gave myself 60 days to create a short animation myself. Plus, I'm not allowed to spend any money. The assets I use have to be free or made by myself. So let's find out what it takes to create such a masterpiece. I started by researching all the steps that Pixar goes through to create their animations. If I want to create my own, I might as well follow their internal workflow. And after a bit more research, I found more than just their basic animation workflow. But for this video, let's focus on their seven step workflow. Step one, the foundation. Toy Story, a bunch of toys. Finding Nemo, a bunch of fish. Cars, you get the point. The animation can look amazing, but if it doesn't tell a great story, it doesn't leave a lasting impression. So after writing out the script for my animation, the next step is to visualize it in a storyboard. A storyboard is basically scribbles that show what the animation will roughly look like in the end. Remember that DQ drew in your friend's math book with way too much detail? That could have been your storyboard for your breakout animation film. Pixar draws out each I mean, scene and shot very roughly to make sure that the written story works visually as well. It helps you fill out the gaps between the plot points you have in your head to make it actually make sense in the end. But Pixar doesn't stop there. They also animate the individual shots very roughly, which means that at the end you basically already have the whole movie planned out. This step is tedious, it takes a long time, but now I know that the animation is around 3 minutes long and I better start working on it. In step 2, the concept and design phase. To create a unique look and feel with unique characters and environments for every animation, Pixar has a team of concept artists that design all the characters and environments. I also have a team. It's called the Blender Studio Character Library. The Blender Studio has created a bunch of animated films over the years and most of the characters from those are accessible in this library. For some of them you have to buy a membership, but for some which stylistically work pretty well together, you don't. Plus they also look pretty similar to the Pixar style, so that worked out pretty well. Well, say hello to snow, rain and autumn. In general, the Pixar style is basically a combination of stylization and realism. All the objects in the world are stylized, but the details of those objects are realistic. So with the characters ready to go and Pixar style in mind, it was day 3 and I was ready to start with step 3, building the world. With my storyboard in mind, I blocked out the environment. The first goal was to make it functional. And with functional, I mean work for the animations I had in mind. Some scenes need a house, some other scenes need a tree. And to make the surrounding environment more appealing, let's add a whole neighborhood. And now with the block of the environment in place, I went to Sketchfam to see if I can find some fitting free models that I could use to speed up the detailing process. This model, for example, had a nice fence for the garden and flower pots for the windows. Or this bush, which I used all over the garden, including the tree. My goal was to refine the fundamental elements first before I later refine the rest. Which is also why in this first part of the project the pie for example still looks like a brick. So don't complain later when you see the first part of the animation that the pie is still unfinished, okay? <laughs> Okay, with all the essential elements in place, day 5 is rolling around and it is time to animate. Well, sort of. It's pretty clear by now that before every complex step, there's a step that makes sure that nothing goes wrong. We don't want our actors to hurt themselves, so why would we break that rhythm now? Before they really start animating, Pixar likes to block out all these shots first. For me, that basically meant trying to decipher the scribbles I drew a few days ago in my storyboard and recreating them in 3D. This seemed like an unnecessary step at first, but it allowed me to focus on the cinematography and timing first before I need to care about the exact movements of each character.
The scenes are set, so now it was finally time to animate. Animating basically just means changing a value, like the position of an object from one point in time to another. So if I wanted to animate Snow raising his leg, I would mark this pose, move forward in the timeline, raise his leg, and then mark this second pose. And that's how basically everything gets animated. From what I've seen, most character animators create all the most significant poses of a scene first, and afterwards they refine it to make it look more natural. And that's how I did it too. Basic poses, refining final animation. Basic poses, refining final animation. Throughout this process, I also learned to love two things in particular. The first one is references. If you're trying to create realistic animations, you might as well use realistic references. To show you how much of a difference this can make, look at these throwing animations. The first one I made without reference, the second one I made with reference. I think the difference is pretty obvious. And if you can't find fitting references on the internet, you can also just shoot it yourself. For this scene, for example, I shot myself putting a plate on a table to see how I move my fingers. The second one is the graph editor. Basic keyframes can only get you so far. The graph editor allows you to adjust the flow at which the values of your model are being changed. This can be super helpful to create more bounciness in your characters or to just smooth out their movement. Before the graph editor, after the graph editor. It is quite a tedious process, but it's also just as satisfying to see the characters move just how you've imagined once you're done. Or at least almost as you've imagined. I might go back and fix some of these later if I have the time for it. But with the animation done, there were only two more steps left. Earlier I described Pixar style as basically a combination of stylization and realism. So far I only really color coded most objects, so now it's time to add some nice details. The bark of the tree, the wooden floor, even grass got a new look. For most of the objects I use free realistic textures, while for others like the tree I created my own with Blender's internal textures. I've only refined some objects so far because I wanted to focus more on the last step, but in the end almost everything will have a nice detailed surface like this. So once again, the pie will look better in the end, I promise. Now this last step actually blew me away. Here, let me actually just show you what it is. Before, after. It is just so good. <laughs> For the second one, I added a few more extra lines, which realistically wouldn't be there, but they add so much more flair and clarity to the scene that it's more than worth it. And as long as the lines are strategically placed so that they make sense, it can only really help the shot. The sun here, for example, is shining through the window onto this wall, so I placed a light shining onto her face from that direction, which just slightly illuminates her face. The light from the sun doesn't actually hit her at all, but you can see that through the camera, so it looks like it makes sense, adds so much more contrast to the scene and perfectly sets her apart from the background. And after lighting all the necessary shots in that way, 25 days have already passed. This project felt really scary before I started. I was working on a different project before this where I encountered a problem that I just couldn't find a solution for, so I had to give up on it. And I was kind of scared that that was going to happen for this one as well. But following this 7 step workflow made it actually pretty approachable. The goals for the second half of the animation are to add a cloth simulation, adding more scenes with different moves and lighting to create different emotions, hopefully making the grass reactive to people stepping on it, and there's going to be a fourth character joining the squad. So some new and scary stuff coming up, but so far I would say yes, you can create an animation like Pixar on your own, but we'll see how the rest turns out. To end this video, here's the first part of the animation, not finished but pretty far down the line. 